Hey guys, it's Jenny here, a couple hours after my last video. So, um, it's been requested that I do like a fantasy recommendations video since I read a lot of fantasy. And as you may see by the thumbnail, you guys are definitely in store for quite a big video because I got such a big workout trying to film that thumbnail. Like, those were just the hardcovers that I have here. There are at least like... 11 more paperbacks that were supposed to be on that stack, but I couldn't physically lift all of the books for the thumbnail So that, those were like only a couple of them and yeah, I almost severely hurt myself But yeah, so anyway, I'm going to be showing you guys a list of my favorite fantasy books um, And these are really in no particular order. They're just all just jumbled up because I totally don't even remember what it's which so I'm going to start over here first. So, first one that I'm picking up is the Mortal Instruments series by The Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. The first book is The City of Bones, then there's The City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, and City of Lost Souls, and then City of Heavenly Fire, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Then City of Heavenly Fire. But um Basically what Mortal, Mortal Instruments is about, if you haven't already read it, it's basically about a girl named Clary who, um, she heads out to the Pandemonium Club in New York City and she ends up w witnessing a murder, which was committed by a bunch of teenagers with oddly marked skin. Um, and yeah, so she, she, she finds out that they're the Shadow Hunters, which are warriors dedicated to ridding the earth of demons and keeping the odd werewolves and vampires in line. And yeah, um, she ends up getting swept into the world of the Shadow Hunters, and it's just a super good series. Cassandra Clare also writes a lot of spin off books with the Shadow Hunter world. So there's um, Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Cl Clockwork Princess, Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, uh, Magnus Bane Chronicles, or something like that. And then there's um, Shadow Hunters Codex. And then there's Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and then there's going to be like Queen of Darkness or something coming out in 2018. But yeah, she's got a whole bunch of books and they all are mainly centered around her frame of the Mortal Instruments world. And it's a really good series. I fell in love with it. It was actually one of the series that got me into YA, so much appreciation there. The next one I have is kind of like... Um, it's kind of like a romance duology, but it's also got a lot of fantasy elements in it, and it's really good. But it's more on the fantasy side, so it's kind of like half and half-ish, but yeah. So, that duology is the Wrath and the Dawn and the Rose and the Dagger duology by Renee Adier. Um, this centers on a girl named Sharzad, who, um, in her country, I believe it's Corsan, um, she... They are ruled by a ruler who, he takes a new wife, like, every day. Every other day. And, um, all of his wives have ended up with a silk cord wrapped around their neck by the next morning after their wedding. And he ends up taking the, the, um, the Caliph of Khorasan. His name is Khalid. Khalid or whatever, I don't know how to say it. Khalid, um... But he ends up taking her best friend as his wife and she ends up dying the next morning. And so she wants vengeance. So when he comes to her city, she offers herself up and she volunteers to be his bride. Um, and she ends up surviving the dawn after their wedding and the dawn after that and the dawn after that. And she, the reason she volunteered was to plan to, um, she planned to like get inside his kingdom and either kill him or... Or discover his darkest secrets that would, you know, bring him down. In order, she was, she was going to get the material to let somebody else bring him down. But as she survives, as she ends up surviving the Dons, she ends up um, finding out that there's more to him that meets the eye. And that he may not be the monster that everybody makes him out to be. So, this duology is just so full of a great romance as well as a great fantasy plot and I just I love it so much I just can't get over how much I love it so yeah those are those ones then we have a very recent read of mine which is Carval by Stephanie Garber um basically Carval takes place 
um, is about these two sisters named Scarlet and Donatella Dragna, who, um, they're the daughters of the governor of the Conquered Isles of Trista, and their father is very abusive, and they want to get away from him, and they've always dreamed of going to Carval, which is a magical game, um, set, in, set on an island, and, yeah, it only happens in a place once a year, and... They've always dreamed of going to Carval for as long as they can remember. They've been writing letters to the master of Carval. His name is Legend. And finally, their last letter to him, he responds, and they get swept into the game of Carval. Um, and then the little sister, Donatella, ends up going missing, and Scarlet has only the certain amount of days to find her before her sister could die. And it's just such a fun story. It's it's not actually fun. It's kind of very dark, but it's also whimsical at the same time. So I really love this story, and I think you guys will too. So this is definitely, like, I couldn't make this video without Carvel in it. And Legendary, its sequel, will be coming out in May, I believe. Yes, pretty sure. Pretty sure it's May. Yeah. So Carvel is definitely a great one. Okay, so the next on my list is another duology, um, and that is the Three Dark Crowns and the One Dark Throne. Um, and there's going to be, I believe, two more books in this series, but it's a duology for now. Um, and basically, Three Dark Crowns centers on a set of triplets, um, and each of them, every 16 or so years, every couple of years, every, I want to say a couple decades um a set of triplet triplets is born and each of them is born with a different power one is an elemental the other one is a naturalist and the other is a poisoner so a set of triplets is born each with their own power and when they reach the age of 16 they're split up at the age of I want to say like six or seven and then once their um, their abilities come in and they f find out which is which, they get split up to go be raised in individual capitals. And when they turn 16, they um, they have to come together and, you know, technically fight for the death for whichever queen is going to be ruling Fenburn. So there's Jules, who is the naturalist. She has the powers to control, like, the... She, she has the powers to, like, bloom the brightest blossoms and control the deadliest beasts. Then there's Art, um, Mirabella, who is a elemental. She can spark flames, she can tr control the water, conjure up storms, and then there's Catherine, who's a poisoner. She can ingest poisons without even a stomach ache, and yeah. So it centers on all these queens who are fighting for the throne of Fenburn, and it's such a good story. I love it so much. Not all is what you think, so it's got quite quite a few great plot twists. I will say that the first book is a bit slow, so um, I recommend n waiting until you finish um, the first book and then start the second book to reserve judgment because the second book is so much better. You guys will love the second book so much. So the next series I have for you guys is a trilogy. And I read this a couple, I want to say, like, the two or three years ago and that is the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children trilogy by Ransom Riggs. We have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, Hollow City, and Library of Souls. So basically this centers on a boy named, oh my god I forgot his name, Jacob. I'm pretty sure that's his name. A boy named Jacob who um, all of his life his grandpa has grown up telling him all these stories of these monsters and these children that have these odd abilities and showing him these pictures and these, pic these children who are just peculiar in every way. Um, so everybody always told him his grandpa was just crazy and that none of it actually existed until his grandpa is killed by the monster that his grandpa had always, you know, warned him about. So he goes off to the coast of Wales to just try to find these peculiar children that his grandpa had always talked about. And he just gets swept in this great world, and I love these books so much, and um, they're just great. I really love them. They also have these really um, vin abnormal, like, vintage pictures in them, and it just, I love how Ransom Riggs made the story around these pictures. I just think it's the greatest thing. Like, 
pictures like this. Yeah. I don't know why that's turning pink, but... Yeah, there's pictures like that all around the story. And he basically writes the story around those pictures. And I just think that's like the coolest thing ever. I would love to be able to do that. So yeah. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is a great trilogy and I would recommend you guys pick it up. Yeah, those go over there. Um, okay. Next I have, I believe it's called like a saga. I don't know. I don't know. Quartet maybe? But yeah, I have the Dorothy Must Die series by Danielle Page. Um, so there are four books in the series plus novellas. First book is obviously Dorothy Must Die. Then the second book is The Wicked Will Rise. The third book is Yellow Brick War. And the fourth book is End of Oz. So yeah, nice little rainbow series for you. Um, Dorothy Must Die centers on a girl named Amy who is from Kansas. She is the other girl from Kansas. Um, yes, she, okay, yeah, I'm going to read you guys the synopsis because it's better explained. It says, I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't ask to be some kind of hero, but when your whole life gets swept up by a tornado taking you with it, you have no choice but to, to go along, you know? Sure, I've read the books, I've seen the movies, but I never expected Oz to look like this. A place where good witches can't be trusted and wicked witches just might be the good guys. A place where even the yellow brick road is crumbling. What happened? Dorothy happened. My name is Amy Gum and I'm the other girl from Kansas. I've been recruited by the Revolutionary Order of the Wicked and, I'm, and I've been given a mission. Remove the Tin Woodman's heart, steal the Scarecrow's brain, take the Lion's courage, and then Dorothy must die. So long story short, after Dorothy uh, left Oz for the first time, she was tired of her life back home and she wanted to go back to Oz. She found a way back, but then she became a tyrant and um, was controlling Oz and um, seeped the magic right out of it. And man, this whole series is just such a great adventure. And I can't recommend the series enough. I was so in love with the story the entire time and it just every book had me going like there wasn't a dull book in this series and it was just all so good and I think you guys would really like it so actually I have the first two books in like a box set and then the rest are not so we're gonna have to put the first two back in their little box set it's adorable if I can get them in there so yeah I have these three. These five, actually. Okay, then the next series is no surprise to you guys. But, um, I have a box set. And I started reading this back in the sixth grade. Um, and I'm in 11th grade and I still love it. <laughs> and that is the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. Actually, I'm just going to go off and let him here and say, read anything by Rick Riordan and you will love it. I'm mostly a fan of Rick Riordan's um, mythology, mainly his Greek and Roman, but I'm recently getting into his Norse stuff, but Percy Jackson and the Olympians, it's a five book series. It is middle grade, but it's great middle grade. Um, and he's been writing more and there's a spinoff series and there's another spinoff series after that, but I will get right into it. So the first book is The Lightning Thief. The second book is Sea of Monsters. The third book is The Titan's Curse. The fourth book is Battle of the Labyrinth. And the fifth book is The Last Olympian. So, basically, Percy Jackson the Olympian centers on a boy named Percy who, he is always in trouble, he's dyslexic, he is AD, I'm pretty sure it's ADD or an ADHD. Um, so yeah, he, um, I'll read you the synopsis for this because I don't remember the synopsis. Percy Jackson is about to be kicked out of his boarding school again, and that's the least of his troubles. Lately, myth mythological monsters and the gods of Olymp and the gods of Mount Olympus seem to be walking straight out of the pages of Percy's Greek mythology textbook and into his life. And worse, he's angered a few of them. Zeus's master lightning bolt has been stolen, and Percy is the prime suspect. <laughs> now, Percy and his friend 
friends. <laughs> friends. Now, Percy and his friends have just 10 days to find and return Zeus's stolen property and bring peace to a warring Mount Olympus. But to succeed in his quest, Percy will have to do more than catch the true thief. He must come to terms with his father who abandoned him, solve the riddle of the oracle who warns him of betrayed by a friend, and, and unravel a treachery more powerful than the gods themselves. And... It may sound fun. I mean, the synopsis may sound very serious, but I promise all of these books are actually so lighthearted. Some of them deal with very real topics, but they also have so much humor in them and you will love them so much. I still love this series. I actually have two copies of this. I have the old, the original covers and then I have the new covers. Granted, this is the first three, but I'm getting the other ones. And yeah, I just love this series so much. I own so much Rick Riordan, and it's not even funny. Um, but yeah, they go back in their box set. That actually stays right here. Then, um, <laughs> another thing by Rick Riordan is his spinoff series to Percy Jackson. And this is the Heroes of the Olympus series. So, since we all missed his character so much, he decided to write us a nice little spin-off series. Ooh! Almost dropped the fifth book. They're very heavy. So, okay. The first one we have is The Lost Hero. The second one is The Son of Neptune. The third book is The Mark of Athena. Okay, yeah, these are getting big. They're all like 500 pages apiece. The fifth, fourth, is The House of Hades. And the fifth book is Blood of Olympus. I loved each and every one of these so beyond much. Um, so, I'll go into more depth in a second. So these two are the most important in the series. Um, the first book actually centers on different characters. So, um, continuing on from the first book, we get, I will read you the synopsis. <sighs> You only really understand this if you read the first series for the Percy Jackson and the Olympians first. It's best to go from Percy Jackson and the Olympians to the Heroes of Olympus, then to the series that I'm about to mention after this. But okay, it says, Jason has a problem. He doesn't remember anything before waking up in a bus full of kids on a field trip. Apparently he has a girlfriend named Piper and his best friend is a guy named Leo. They're all students at the Wilderness School, a boarding school for bad kids, as Leo puts it. What did Jason do to end up here, and where is he exactly? Jason doesn't know anything, except that everything seems very wrong. So he is amnesia. Piper has a secret. Her father, a famous actor, has been missing for three days ever since she had that terrifying nightmare about his being in trouble. Piper doesn't understand her dream or why her boyfriend suddenly doesn't recognize her. When a freak storm hits during the school trip, unleashing strange creatures and whisking her, Jason, and Leo away to some place called Camp Half-Blood, she has a feeling she's she's going to find out whether she wants to or not. Leo has a way with tools. When he sees his cabin at Camp Half-Blood filled with power tools and machine parts, he feels right at home. But there's weird stuff, too, like his curse everyone keeps talking about and some camper who's gone missing. Weirdest of all, his bunkmates insist that each of them, including Leo, is related to a god. Does this have anything to do with Jason's amnesia or the fact that Leo keeps seeing ghosts? Join new and old friends from Camp Halfwood in this thrilling first book in the Heroes of Olympus series. Best selling, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, yeah, this is the first book. This kind of deals with um, new characters, but also old characters at the same time. Then, this is where our friend Percy comes back. Um, yeah, Percy is confused. When he awoke from his long sleep, he didn't know how much much more than his name. His brain fuzz is lingering even after Wolf Lupa told him he is a demigod and trained him to fight with the pen sword in his pocket. Somehow Percy manages to make it to camp half to a camp for half bloods, despite the fact that he that he has to keep killing monsters along the way. But the but the camp doesn't ring any bells with him. The only thing he can recall from his past is another name. Annabeth. That makes me want to cry. Um Hazel is supposed to be dead. When she lived before, she didn't do a very good job of it. Sure, she was an obedient daughter, even when her mother was possessed by greed. But that was a problem. When the voice took her, took over, took over her mother and commanded Hazel to use her gift for an evil purpose, Hazel couldn't say no. Now, because of her mistake, the future of the world is at risk. Hazel wishes she could ride away from it all on the stallion that appears in her dreams. 
Frank is a klutz. His grandmother says he is descended from the heroes and can be anything he wants to be, but he doesn't see it. He doesn't even know whose father is. He keeps hoping Apollo will claim him because the only thing he is good at is archery, although not good enough to win camp war games. His bulky physique makes him feel like an ox, especially in front of Hazel, his closest friend at camp. He trusts her completely enough to share the secret he holds close to his heart. Oh no! There's no backflap! I can't finish reading the synopsis. Anyways, yeah. So the first two are the most important, and then the last three, they all band together, and you get so many adventures. And I just love it because I've studied mythology so much that it's just so good. Like, I've taken every single mythology class possible in school, and my teacher's obsessed with Percy Jackson, so it's just all so good. And then I also have The Lost Hero and The Son of Neptune in graphic novels, so yeah. Um, I would definitely highly, highly, highly recommend that series to you guys. Oh, so the next duology is also by Rick Riordan, and that is The Trials of Apollo... The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. So I would recommend going Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Heroes of Olympus, then this series. Um, basically, it's about the god Apollo who loses his immortality during, because he obviously ticked off Zeus. And so Zeus casts him down from Olympus to live as a mortal, so he gets help from his friends at Camp Half-Blood. And they guide him through the trials to regain his immortality try to sum that up because I know I've been talking a lot. So yes, finally, this obviously wouldn't be a uh, fantasy recommendation if I didn't have my uh, favorite book series on here, guys. Like, what the actual heck? Um, anyways, lastly for you guys, I have the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass. Oh my god, I love these books so much. You guys are probably so sick of me t talking about this series, but it's okay. The first book is A Court of Thorns and Roses. The second book is A Court of Mist and Fury. And the third book is A Court of Wings and Ruin. So yeah, I'm going to talk about the first book because these books are so freaking heavy. The first book is about a huntress named Feyre who is trying to feed her starving family. So she is a huntress. She's out hunting for food one day when she comes across a wolf. She ends up shooting it and selling its pelt and making profits off of it to feed her family. Then the night after, um, a beast busts down her door demanding retribution for um, her crime, which was killing that wolf in the woods, which turned out to be a fae. So this beast demands retribution for what she did, and she gets whisked off to the land of Prithian to serve out her life sentence. Prithian is the land of the Fae, and yeah, so she discovers that the beast that took her is not actually a beast, but the High Lord of Spring Court named Tamlin. And yeah, so this hatred she has towards him turns into a passion, and then she learns of a dangerous threat to his court um, that is also a possible threat to the human realm. So she does whatever she can to help. Um, and it's just such a good book, guys. This, granted, this is, like, my least favorite in the trilogy because the second ones just get so much better. Like, I really loved this. But then as I read, it's just, like, I, it's just great. I hope you guys, I hope this helped for any of you who are looking to get into fantasy and haven't read some of these. Um, and let me know if you decide to check any of them out or if you saw some of your favorite fantasy series on this list. Alright, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and always comment down below because I love hearing from you guys. Thanks guys!